Hey guys, welcome back. I am Brie if you are new here. So tonight I harvested all of my garlic, which I am so excited about. This has been almost eight months in the making to the day. So I actually planted out all of the garlic on October 15th, which is supposed to be my first expectant frost here um, in Kansas zone 6B. And now today, as I'm filming this, it is June 14th. So it's been eight months almost to the day. Honestly, I was going to wait another week or two to harvest this. And then the last few days, it's honestly just really started to brown up a lot. And the more I started to look into things again, just because this is my very first year doing garlic, I wanted to just kind of double check myself. So I watched a ton more videos and I'm like, yeah, this is really looking like I should probably do this like now. So I harvested one of these cloves the other day and it looked really, really good. And I was like, okay. So one thing, if you do not know, is if your garlic is in the ground too long, cloves will start to split. And I'm really glad I went ahead and did this because actually I think that one's looking okay. You can see here that the outer like skin is starting to come off and these layers one by one will just come off slowly. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This would have been maybe eight, nine layers. So I mean, it really only had seven more layers to go. The more layers that deteriorate, the easier the cloves are being exposed and they can crack, they can get soil in those cloves and then you really can't store that garlic just because it can cause mold and such. I did end up having, this one's actually okay now that I look at it a little closer, but I did have one, if you can see there, it cracked in the ground. So I'm gonna go ahead and probably, I'm gonna try to clean this up. I may go ahead and just use this fresh. I might toss that one. And then this one I actually did myself. So this would have been a fine piece of garlic, but then I went in with my little shovel tool and knocked off a piece of it. So I also can't really do anything with that as well. Hi, Bubs. What's up, sir? You smelling the garlic? I did get quite a few cloves that were really, really good in size, but then I did get a few that were just these itty bitty tiny little babies, but most of them look like this, which I am very, very, very excited about. This bed was almost completely full of garlic. I did completely plant it full of garlic back in October, but I bought a soft neck variety from my local uh, nursery that just did not take. And with how cold our winter was, I honestly don't know if it would have lasted. So if you do not know, there's hard neck and there's soft neck varieties. Pretty much in my zone of 6B, you can kind of do both from what I've read. Pretty much if you wanna steer clear of any problems, kind of just go hard neck, but don't count me on that. That's just kind of what I researched before doing this. I am going to expand my garlic this upcoming year. I've actually already bought all of my seed garlic. And if you're wanting to plant garlic in the fall, I'd advise to go ahead and look into it now. A lot of farmers go ahead and do pre-orders for their garlic and they ship it out come August and September. So keep that in mind. I will link the company that I've used down below. I really like them. They're completely certified organic. So yeah, I really trust them. They're also growing in my zone of 6B. I believe they're out of Ohio. So Mad River, garlic growers is the name. So I will make sure I link them in the description box below for you guys. So this is a variety called Chesnook Red. Um, and so far, um, I've never had it. It's supposed to be a really, really, really good cooking garlic. And that's one reason why I got it. Either way, I'm gonna let this garlic sit out for another day or two to go ahead and just dry out a little bit more before I go ahead and hang it up in my shed. Um, it just needs to get a little bit of exposure. These roots are really, really wet. And then these stalks, since it is a hard neck variety, hold a lot of water. So I just want them to dry out a little bit longer before I hang them up. So I will actually be planting black beans in the place here. And my whole reason behind that is I'm hoping that the beans will help replace some of the nitrogen that the garlic took out. And also, uh, I don't know why I've never grown black beans before, but you do have to let them dry on the pod if you want a shelling bean. And that gives me plenty of time. I'm hoping to actually plant this full of beans, let the beans dry, harvest the beans, and then turn around and actually plant this bed full of garlic again later in the fall. So we'll see how that goes, but that's uh, what my game plan is. But other than that, I asked you guys over on my Instagram if you had any garden questions, and I have about, I think 10 or 12 here that I wrote down. So I'm just gonna go ahead and go through and answer some questions. So the first question I have is, what is the biggest challenge you've faced so far this year? 
Um, probably everything tomato related. So I was dealing with a ton of spider mites, aphids. Um, then I started dealing with early blight. And I feel like I'm just now starting to get all of those things under control. But then I turned around two days ago and I was pruning off some of the early blight that I saw over on my determinants. And I noticed that a handful of them started to get blossom and rot. So a lot of my tomatoes are actually completely fine, especially over there in the in-ground space. But where I have my indeterminates in those grow bags, that is the fourth year I am growing in these grow bags. And honestly, I probably should have amended them a little bit better than I did. Um, most of them are fine. Um, honestly, it's mostly a nutrition problem when you deal with blossom and rot. So I topped it off with black cow. That's typically what I use whenever I supplement some things. If I'm starting to have any more problems, I'll go buy a tomato fertilizer or something like that. But overall, tomatoes this year have been very challenging and a lot more hands-on just because I've always done determinate varieties before this. And this year, um, more than half or actually half of my tomatoes are indeterminate. So indeterminates are a little bit more hands-on. I felt like I could go ahead and tackle that now that I am spending the summer really trying to hone in my gardening skills. So either way to answer, <laughs> answer your question, all things tomatoes. All right, so second question is, what is your most hands-on plant? And yeah, uh, tomatoes, if you didn't already figure that out. Pretty much I have to prune those every week at the very minimum. Um, and since I had so many problems with them already, I've really had to be hands-on with them a lot, picking off bugs, spraying bugs, clipping blight off. We've just had a really, really humid, wet and hot, hot June. Next up, when is best to harvest? Okay, so this is kind of a question that isn't so black and white, but if you're just wanting like flat out time of day, nine times out of 10, best time to harvest, morning. If you can be up before 9 a.m. before the heat of the day to harvest, that's typically when it's going to be best. But honestly, this kind of changes year round. So if you still have like cabbage or lettuce or anything leafy greens in your garden and it's still not hot enough to pull those yet, best time, obviously morning. But if you have those in your garden in the fall, in the winter, and they're overwintering, honestly, you can pick them at any given point of the day because they're always going to be cold. They're always going to be crisp and tender. And that is the beauty of having a fall winter garden and speaking of that I honestly don't know if I'm actually going to plant any lettuce or broccoli again in my fall garden I mean or my spring garden just because our springs are just so abnormal I'm really glad I got as much of I mean I got to harvest all of my cabbage which was great but a lot of those cool crops really don't do too well here in the spring it just gets too hot too quick before they can fully mature but then when it comes to tomatoes I actually like to harvest those later in the evening after the heat of the day because those sugars will actually condense and also another point you also don't want to harvest your cucumbers and your tomatoes after a lot of heavy rain if they are on the vine and they're looking like they could be harvested within a day or so go ahead and pick those before any hard hard rain or heavy rain because that's just going to water down and kind of fuse out a lot of that flavor you will get and when it comes to harvesting my tomatoes one thing I implemented last year was I really tried to make sure I wouldn't water them the day before that way they were kind of thirsty and kind of reaching and then that way they would also condense their sugars a little more so really harvesting is not really a black and white answer everything is going to be different but if you want kind of a foolproof method nine times out of ten just do it in the morning before the heat of the day that kind of got a little lengthy there but there's a lot to explain uh favorite thing you're growing this always changes like one day i'll really like one thing and the next day i'll really like another it kind of depends on how they're doing in my garden but always i love growing sunflowers i just love the height they bring the beauty they bring i wish they would bloom longer than they do but i think they're always going to have a special part in my garden and one thing i can't wait for is to have some land and to be able just to plant a whole sunflower patch but luckily enough since i live in kansas there are quite a few sunflower patches here so if i want to get that fixed i can just drive like an hour away to a farm field and get that but i'm doing three different varieties this year i'm doing a goldie honey bear a red one called sun I don't know just so much but then also uh, 
Russian mammoth. Last year, I had absolutely zero luck with any of my sunflowers. They just kept getting rust and I was dealing with a lot of fungal problems. And I also planted them in one gallon grow bags, which was just a very, very dumb thing on my part. But this year, they're, they're looking really, really good. So fingers crossed. When are you going to start your fall vegetables? So last year, I started all of my fall starts uh, beginning of July, I think. And this year I'm going to hold off to do any of my starts for the fall garden until probably end of July, beginning of August. And then I'm going to plan to plant most of those out probably mid to about mid September. Um, I don't have a full game plan yet, but last year I kind of made a mistake. I planted a lot out the beginning of August, I believe. And then by the time it hit October, our October was a very, very warm October and our Octobers can go kind of either way, kind of like our springs. It can get really cold really fast or it can kind of just stay warm. And it stayed warm for a very, very long time until it got really cold and stayed cold. So this year, I think I'm just going to play it safe, especially because I do use solar plastic and I'm going to use frost fabric. Um, I'm going to plant everything out probably beginning to mid-September instead just because again So yeah, all of my lettuce bolted before it really got cold and that was just again a novice mistake on my part Last year was the very first time I did a fall garden But I really really loved the learning experience I had from it because this year I do have a way better approach to what I'm going to do like I'm probably going to plant a few garden beds of just lettuce alone, which will be really nice. And then we will have fresh lettuce the entire winter. That is, unless for some reason we get like a huge negative temp <laughs> spike, kind of like we did this last February. But yeah, I'm probably going to wait until end of July, August to do anything fall related or cool crop related if you're in a zone that is cooler than mine definitely definitely check it out but if you are in zone 6b probably wait until then help my leaves have spots what's happening so um let's see here i don't know if you can see from that far away or not but that is a sign of rust um there's also blight that has spot there's black spot um, you know, just kind of look things up, Google it, and little pictures will pop up and it'll kind of better tell you on what potentially could be problem. But nine times out of 10, it's probably something fungal related. One thing I like to do is mix apple cider vinegar, a little bit of apple cider vinegar with my neem oil when I spray. That has seemed to help at least control it for the most part. Um, by this time last year, I would already lost my first round of sunflowers because of how bad the rust got so fast. With how humid and hot this year's been, it's honestly just been a challenge to continue to fight fungal problems in my garden, but that is probably what's happening. Okay, so next up I have, do you want to expand and grow food to sell? This is not my full on goal. I think it would be fun to at least try, but for me, growing food is more about my my own sustainability and knowing that I'm providing the most nutritious food for me and my husband um, when it comes to things I would sell I would probably dabble more into the cut flower side of things um, you can make a lot more money in a smaller space doing that and I think I would have less hard of a time selling off my flowers than my produce just because my produce is very special to me I do love my flowers but there's a better market for selling flowers than there is produce at least there is at the moment i mean if i could really scale and that was just in the cards for me heck yeah i would totally do it but that's a lot of work um and i would prefer to kind of do more of a homesteading method where i'm putting back a lot of that food myself i'm definitely not fully efficient on my little space that i currently have we were able to get about I think six months total of tomato sauce. I'm really hoping to get like eight to nine months this year. My ultimate goal is to have a whole year's worth of tomato sauce, which is a lot of tomatoes and a lot of processing sauce. But that is one thing that we definitely go through here a lot. I do have plenty of herbs still from last year. I dried a ton of herbs from last year, but there's still a lot I could do on my own part to sustain myself before really trying to sell those things off unless I absolutely had to. How do you protect your garden from hail and wind in Kansas? You just, you pray for the best. At least that's what I've done most of the time. I've lost, 
I actually lost my first garden entirely to hail, but luckily enough, it was like the end of May and I still had plenty of time to re plant everything I just didn't have a harvest until like September or October that year for anything um, but we had hail the other night it didn't do any damage it was really tiny once it got an hour away though it got to tennis ball size and there has been grapefruit size um, accounted for this year so far so honestly I mean if there's grapefruit size hail coming down there's honestly nothing you can do I mean you could try to throw down a bunch of buckets but when you have a garden like I have and you have trellises and I mean you have things everywhere it's kind of impossible to cover up everything so you kind of just have to hope for the best as far as wind goes um, I have a ton of bamboo stakes everywhere I have a ton of supports just because you get a bunch of gusty wind and it will take out some of your stuff for example I almost lost like two of my sunflowers the other night because it really hasn't been that windy and then out of nowhere we had a complete downpour and we had like 40 mile per hour winds out of nowhere and I didn't have a few of my sunflowers staked but yeah that's what I do. Do you save seeds? So I have saved a few seeds not many. I do plan to save quite a few more this year just to kind of help supplement costs with seeds. Um, My broccoli plant is going to seed and it mm. is going absolutely crazy. I think probably maybe four or six more weeks. I was completely off on the time frame when I originally told you guys this, but probably four to six more weeks, I have to wait for the plant to completely die back before I can harvest those pods and they dry out and I'd be able to harvest all those seeds. But the plant is very developed and I'm really, really excited to do that. Um, I am dabbling more into it this year just so, again, I don't have to spend a ton of money on seeds. Flower seeds are really easy, so. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna dabble some more. All right, so this is going to be the last one. What do you use to fertilize? And I don't do anything too crazy. I mean, I will look up certain plants like my blueberry plant. Blueberries have to be in very acidic soil and pretty much I have to make sure that soil stays acidic. So I do use a organic soil acidifier. Um, there's times I will buy like organic like tomato like granules. I'll also buy worm like liquid worm castings. I use a uh, black cow a lot of the times just to supplement on the top. Um, but I don't do anything fancy. I always throw compost down at the very beginning of the year. And then if I notice anything like getting yellow or not looking as best, I will kind of just feed it and make sure um, it has some nutrition because when you're growing in beds and containers, you definitely need to make sure of that, especially containers you've grown in before. It's probably lost a lot of nutrition. So if you're having some struggling plants, that could be potentially the problem, but I don't like to use any chemicals in my garden. I've never used any type of chemical in my garden. I've just done everything organic. I guess I can't really say that. I have used like little ant traps just because the ants here are insane, but that's not any type of spray or anything. But if I didn't do that, my ants would be insane. And I already have problems with ants attacking my sunflowers. And I spray these sunflowers every day because of these ants. All right, guys, that is going to conclude it for me today. The sun is setting. If you have any other questions for me, definitely leave them in the comments below. I definitely try to get to as many of you guys as possible. But until next time, I'll see you guys then. Bye. Thank you.